Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck. This one is nicknamed Skycleave. It's a black-red Scourge of the Skyclaves deck featuring the new 2-mana Mythic Rare Demon from Zendikar Rising. It also has Kicker for 4 on the black, and if we cast it with Kicker, each player loses half of their life total rounded up, although we won't be kicking it very often. And Scourge of the Skyclaves' power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. So Scourge has the potential of being an incredibly large creature for just 2 mana, reminiscent of Death Shadow in Modern. The major difference is that we also need to look at the opponent's life total, so we do need to be relatively aggressive to get the opponent's life total low enough so we can play a large Scourge. And then in order to lower our own life total, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve. The major one is in the mana base, as we're playing these eight dual face cards from Zeneca Rising, which we can play untapped at the cost of three life. And then we can also play the spell half, of course, with Shatter Skull Smashing, dealing a bunch of damage, and Agadim's Awakening, potentially returning creatures from the graveyard. And then in addition to these, we also have a Blood Crypt, which we can play untapped at the cost of two life. And then we've got eight of the deserts from Amonkhet Remastered, with Ifner Deadlands and Ramonap Ruin, which we can tap for colored mana at the cost of one life, so we can keep lowering our own life total. And then we also have one of each basic land to round out the mana base. So there's no problem in getting our own life total low enough, so it's mostly going to depend on getting the opponent's life total lower to increase the size of our Scourge of the Skyclaves. And the title already hinted at Embercleave being in the deck, as it pairs very nicely with our Scourge of the Skyclaves, giving it plus one plus one, double strike and trample. And we can potentially deal a bunch of damage in first strike damage to still grow the Scourge of the Skyclaves by the time we're dealing regular damage. So the Scourge might not have the same amount of power and toughness with first strike damage and regular damage, so that's also a very cool interaction. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we do have some Knight Synergies, and the major reason is that we're also playing with Stormfist Crusader, which pairs very nicely with our Scourge of the Skyclaves as a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Human Knight with Menace, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, each player draws a card and loses one life. So this is also a way to draw more cards, find all these combo pieces between Scourge and Embercleave, and also lower the opponent's life total at the same time. And then it also helps us enable the Embercleave as a 2-2 Menace creature is difficult to block. And then we also have the full place of the Fervent Champion, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one Human Knight with first strike and haste. And when the Champion attacks, we can give another Attacking Knight plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and also makes it free to move the Embercleave onto it. And Knight of the Ebon Legion is also one of the all-stars in the deck, as a 1 mana 1-2 one, Vampire Knight. For 2 and a black, we can give it plus 3 plus 3 and Death Touch until end of turn. And at the beginning of our end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. And in this deck, it's actually pretty easy to lose for life ourselves in one turn between all these shock lands, bolt lands, and all the deserts from Amonkhet Remastered. We're also playing with Thoughtseize, which can deal 2 damage to us, so we're often just going to lose 4 life in one turn ourselves, which will put a counter on the Knight of the Ebon Legion. And while it might seem counterintuitive to keep lowering our own life total, it doesn't matter as long as we can get one good hidden with our Scourge of the Skyclaves, especially if it's equipped with an Ember Cleave, as we'll just end the game in a single attack. Then taking a look at the other spells in the deck, we've got the full place of the Blood Chief's Thirst, another new addition from Zendikar Rising. One mana sorcery that destroys a creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less, and we can also kick it for two and a black, and then we can destroy any creature or planeswalker instead. We also have Thought Seize to give us a bit of hand disruption, also it costs us two life, so it's quite synergistic with our Scourge and potentially Knight of the Ebon Legion. And then we've got the full play set of Shock to deal two damage to any target at instant speed. Can also just point this at the opponent's face to make sure we can play our Scourge. And then at two mana, besides our four copies of Scourge and Crusader, we also have two copies of Dreadhorde Arcanist, which can get back our one mana spells from the graveyard. And a neat interaction with Arcanist is the one with Blood Chief's Thirst. We can actually play the Thirst out of the graveyard with Kicker if we pay an additional two and a black, so we can still potentially kill a larger creature while flashing it back with the Arcanist. And then at 3 mana we've got a light up the stage, which we're often going to cast for just a single red, thanks to Spectacle. And then we get to exile the top 2 cards of our library, and until our next turn we can play those cards. So that's another nice bit of card advantage. And then we've got our 4 copies of Embercleave. 4 copies might be a little bit excessive, and it's probably not the optimal number, but it's just a lot of fun to combine it with Scourge of the Skyclaves, and I just want to maximize that interaction. If you don't play Embercleave, you could also potentially play Lurus in the companion slot, which is maybe even better. And 
then you can play other ways of giving the Scourge of the Skyclave's Trample. I've seen people play Crash through as a one mana sorcery that you can also get back with Arcanist to give a Trample. You can maybe play Footfall Craters to give it both Haste and Trample at the same time. So those are all cards you can consider. And then we've already covered the mana base. Of course, the fact that we have all these activated abilities on our lands means that we're never going to risk flooding out. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. And yeah, we've got a pretty painful start here with three of the Mythic Rare dual-faced cards. But I think this is a keep. And then I can go turn one Knight, turn two maybe Thoughtseize and put a counter on the Knight right away. And hope they don't have a shock here. Opponent with a turn to Steamkin. So let's have a look with Thoughtseize. As another Steamkin, Champion, Amber Cleave. Probably just taking the Steamkin here. And then I can play the Smashing untapped to shock the Steamkin, put a counter on Knights. That seems okay. And then I probably want to stay back with Knight to block their Fervent Champion so they can't enable Spectacle on light of the stage. Opponent found a Scorch Spitter as well. Alright, so... Now... I probably want to attack with Knights. And then I can Spectacle light up the stage, play Crusader maybe. Alright, found two more Knights. I think I still play Crusader here, because we want to find uh, Scourge of the Skyclaves. Opponent's going to light up for 3 mana, finding Annex and another light up. Annex pretty scary with Embercleave. Alright. So I can attack and just play all the Knights, essentially. Seems fine. And I'm okay trading Crusader for both one drops here. All right, so we've got some blockers back. Double Crusader, so as soon as we find the Scourge, we're in business. Thirst can deal with Annex here, and we found our own Amber Cleave. So, is my opponent just dead? I think there's a good chance they are. So let me play the Ramana Prunes, and then I can pump Knight and Amber Cleave on that same Knight. And a Fervent Champion pumps. Probably one of the Stormfist Crusaders. Or I can just pump the biggest knight here. I guess it's fine. And then just pump the biggest knight and put the Amber Cleave there. Opponent does seem to have a response. Rimrock Knight, the champion, sure. And Death Touch plus Double Strike and Trample means we can just trample over with all the damage here. Alright, so even without Scourge of the Skyclaves, the combo of dealing ourselves damage to grow the Knight of the Ebon Legion was still quite powerful. 
on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a beautiful hand, a bit of interaction with Thoughtseize, some aggressive threats, and then Scourge with plenty of lands to deal ourselves damage. Sequencing is interesting here. I might want to play turn 1 Knights, and then turn 2 I can play this, deal myself 3, 2 more from Thoughtseize to put counter on Knight, and play Fervent Champion. So let's do that. And then turn 3 we can play a pretty big Scourge, hopefully. Turn 1 Pelt Collector. So yeah, let's have a look with Thoughtseize. Ooze, Primal Might, Serpent. Ooze is sort of annoying. Uh, is Primal Might more annoying is a question. I can Thoughtseize next turn as well. So I can take whatever I didn't take now, but they could just cast the Primal Might next turn. Although I think it's okay if they cast it next turn. Killing one of my one drops. And it can not even kill my Knight of the Evil Legion since it's gonna get a counter here. So I'll just take the ooze before they can play it. Can't thought sees plus scourge next turn, but we'll see. So our opponent drops to 17, Knight gets a counter because we took 4 damage ourselves. It's gonna be a Stone Coil for 2, Growing Pelt Collector. We did find a Blood Crypt, so that's nice. Can attack with Knight of the Evil Legion, opponent probably takes it, and then... I can Scourge plus Thought Seize, take away the Primal Might, and have a... Uh, 5-5 five, five Scourge to begin with. And the Knight picks up another counter thanks to the Blood Crypt Thought Seize combo. Opponent doesn't have any attacks. Picked up another knight. So this can grow up to a 6-7 with death touch. So that can get in there. If we had an Ember Cleave here, the game just would have been over. And we'll pump. Scourge 11 11, play another knight, they both pick up counters. Another Lost Rock Beast, alright, not a bad draw, all things considered. Opponent sends in everyone. Um, I guess I would rather eat Spelt Collector here. Sure. Another knight to draw, and our opponent explodes just too far behind. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a double Fervent Champion Crusader opening hand. Thought sees a nice addition too. Yeah, this hand seems fine. Facing turn one, Arboreal Grazer. Puts in an island. So that will put a damper on my Fervent Champions, but I think I'm still okay playing Champion here, and then next turn I can go Fervent Champion plus Thought Seize maybe. Still nothing for three. Could also get the Crusader going first and then next turn Thought Seize. There's nothing too scary for four mana that I need to worry about. So yeah, let's uh, attack and play Stormfists. Fists. 
Another grazer. No lanes. So good window for Thoughtseize. Do I want to do anything else first? I can light up the stage maybe. Another Fervent Champion. And yep, opponent's got a bunch of expensive 5 mana cards in hand, double Ulamog. We'll just take uh, Nissa here, I think. And then I can play an extra Fervent Champion. That's probably okay. Next turn we can maybe take out some of these arboreal grazers. Another line of the stage, we'll start there. Ooh, Ember Cleave. Ember Cleave is nice. Could also keep Thirst to kill Cavalier if they play it by kicking it next turn. So this turn I could just play the Umber Cleave. Yeah, it seems fine. Didn't have enough red mana to play Fervent Champion. Bone falls to eight. We'll keep Amber Cleave on Crusader for now. And if my opponents play Cavalier, I think they're just dead on board. So yeah, this is one of those matchups where the opponent isn't pressuring our life total. So if we did draw the Scourge, having all these shock lands to get ourselves to five meant we could have played a 12-12 Scourge for two mana. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and we've got Scourge in hand, so we've got decent mana, some creatures to pressure the opponent, so yeah, this looks like a keep. No one mana spells to get back with Arcanist just yet. Now, sequencing in the early turns is incredibly tricky with this deck, since you've got so many decisions. In this case, we definitely want to play Fervent Champion on turn one, got to decide between Smashing and Ramen Up Runes. I think I'll go with the Smashing here. And then turn two, I might Crusader before playing the Scourge. But we'll see. Opponent with a turn one Pelt Collector. Yeah, definitely want to play one of my two drops this turn. And I'm thinking Stormfist just to get the ball rolling. So we'll hit for one. And then if we can find Amber Cleave, we're in business. Opponent on red-green. So maybe a Gruul collected company deck. They could have Stomp here for Crusader, but they let the trigger resolve. Thirst, a nice answer to Pelt Collector. Although we are stuck with just single black mana. So let me start by attacking here. And we'll see what happens. Alright, they did have the stomp, but they wanted to draw the extra card, I guess. Point falls to 16. So Scourge is pretty large now. Which is good. Probably don't want to take any unnecessary damage since we're pretty low already. So let's light up... And play Scourge. And then next turn we can play both Exiled cards potentially. 
So Scourge already a 4-4, but it's just going to keep on growing. Gruel Spellbreaker, 4-4 four, four Trample, Knight to draw. So I don't have an easy way of attacking the opponent this turn to Spectacle light up the stage. So it's a bit of an awkward turn here. Don't want to trade Scourge for Spellbreaker. So I guess my play is just play Stormfist Crusader and pass. Is that better than light up the stage for three mana? I would like to find additional black mana, so I can maybe Thirst or Knight this turn as well. But long term, I think Crusader is still going to be better for us. And the next turn we can maybe have a double Blood Chief's Thirst turn. Especially if we draw black mana, I can play this Killing Pelt Collector and then flash it back with Kicker to kill Spellbreaker. Looks like they're going to fight with the Domri's Ambush, killing my Scourge, sadly. Spellbreaker attacks. We'll take it. There's Embercleave and a Blood Crypt, so I think we're going to make the play I described. We're just killing all the opponent's stuff. Now we are at 5, we could die to some hasty creatures here. A single Spellbreaker doesn't do it, but Spellbreaker plus Stomp would be game. But if they don't kill us here, we can definitely deal a ton of damage on the way back. Alright, Questing Beast also does it, as we're gonna die to our own Crusader on our upkeep. So they weren't playing the company version, but just a regular Gruul version with Questing Beast still. Alright, it's too bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Don't love this opening hand. We've got a bunch of removal. Champion without any other knights is unexciting. No real card draw. Let's try again. This is much better. It's gonna be difficult to put one card on the bottom. So, turn one knight into turn two. Thought Seize plus Smashing grows the knights. So I think we can get rid of the Ramana Peruins here, although it is the second red source for Cleave. Just gotta hope to draw another one at some point. Opponent with turn one Mountain. And Score Spitter. Alright, I think uh, I'm gonna stick to the plan. Do I attack with knights? Or do I stay back? I think I do want to attack so I can potentially play Scourge. And then I could also just play the Blood Crypt instead of the Smashing, because we are playing against a burn deck so my life total could matter. Well, that's a hand. Only one land, collateral damage. Could kill my knights. So maybe that's what I have to take here, or I can take the Libo stage to prevent card draw. Yeah, I guess if they collateral damage my knight, it's fine. And just hope they keep getting stuck on one mana. Alright, sadly they do collateral damage my knights. So Scourge is only a 1-1 one -one at the moment. So playing Crusader makes more sense. And my life total is low enough already, so I'll just play this tapped. We 
Well, we do have the two cards we want in our opening hands, but... Question is... Are my creatures gonna survive? Alright, Thirst is not a bad one. So... Can attack. Now this is a 4-4. And then I can Thirst the Lava Runner as well. And we'll play this tapped. And then next turn I could Ember Cleave. Which potentially... let's see. So I'm at 8. Opponent's at 16. If I Ember Cleave... 5 power of First Strike... Means... Opponent drops to 11. This grows by 5. And yeah, this would just be lethal. So if their play is just Infuriate here, we're fine. And if their play is Fervent Champion on defense, I think they're also still dead. The only thing that can mess this up is if they kill the Crusader with like a shock. Alright, Infuriates puts me to 4. And unless my math is off, they should be dead here. Sweet. And we ended the game with an 18-18 Scourge. Not bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and we've got a very aggressive hand here. I'm down to keep. And what do I play turn 1? Probably Knight of the Evil Legion. Because we have only the one black source and uh, a lot of black spells in hand, so gotta make sure to use Blood Crit for black each turn we can. Elves. So... Champion plus Knight or Champion plus Thoughtseize is a question here. If we're playing against an Elf Tribal deck, taking like an Archdruid could be important. Otherwise I think I prefer the board presence from Knights. So, take one. Opponent on a red green. And a gruel spellbreaker. Alright, so with Ramana Ruins, I can now grow both my knights without having to attack. Now I could still attack with the knights, because they can't really block them. So let's do that. Alright, Ronas, Embercleaf, Lovestruck Beast. All these cards are problematic. Ronas being indestructible, probably the biggest problem at the moment. Although Embercleaf might just kill me. Yeah, I think I gotta take Ronas because I don't have an answer for Spellbreaker, so this will stay as a 5 5 indestructible. And my opponent can be too aggressive here, because we do have a lot of power if they don't have any blockers back. They do still attack with the Spellbreaker. And then they can adventure Lovestruck Beast and Plate, I guess. Opponent passes with two mana up. So this is probably like a stomp, if I had to guess. Although it doesn't kill any of my Knights of the Evil Legion. So can I afford to attack with my Knights? I guess one Knight can attack alongside all the Fervent Champions. And then I can keep Knight of the Evil Legion on defense, which I can then pump 
to soak up the Spellbreaker with potential Ember Cleave. Opponent falls to seven, will pass. The knights grow. Yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't play the Lovestruck Beast here. Alright, they do have Stomp. So I drop to two, and my opponent should be dead on the way back. Alright, sweet, close game here against Gruul, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand actually is totally fine. We've got two lands, Scourge, bit of interaction. Yeah, I'll keep. And then turn one. Interesting choice here. I probably want to play Fervent Champion, so maybe next turn I can light up the stage. If they play creature, I can Thirst, then going turn one Thoughtseize, turn two Thirst plus Champion could maybe work out slightly better. Opponent with a Gito Lava Runner. Second Thirst plus a light up the stage here. And then we just need to find an Amber Cleaf to put on the Scourge, and we're good to go. Alright, that works. And we'll take a look. Alright, that's a lot of burn. So... They don't have any instants or sorceries in their graveyard yet. Probably take the Steamkin, as it can get out of hand if we can kill it. It's gonna be double Lava Runner. Stormfist Crusader to draw. So I could smashing for two, killing one Lava Runner, but I'm probably better off going Crusader plus Scourge. It's going to be a 3-3, so could get killed by Burn Spell, but hopefully that's not the case. And then we'll just play the Blood Crypts. And we're just an Amber Cleave away from a lot of damage. And even if they kill Scourge, I can maybe get it back with Agadim's Awakening, if we find another black source. So Scourge definitely gets to attack. Can even use Ramanap Ruins here to potentially grow it if needed. And then hopefully opponent can deal 4 damage to us, and next turn we draw into a cleave. It's gonna be Annex. Come on, Amber Cleave. 
Shock, another Scourge, and a land. So, not the best set of draws. In my graveyards, there's nothing really to get back. So I can attack with Scourge. See what opponent does, and then play another Scourge, keep up Shock. At least I don't have to be worried about an opposing Ember Cleave since we've got a 10 10 on defense. But a simple shock here could maybe kill me. Although I could shock my own Crusader to prevent dying to it. Lava Runner, Fervent Champion. Okay. No attacks. So if my opponent has a shock in hand, I can play around it by shocking my own Crusader right now. If it's a 3 damage burn spell, it doesn't matter. I think I should kill Crusader and then I have two draw steps to find Amber Cleave essentially to win the game. Another Scourge. Down to 3 we go. If near dead lands, that's not gonna do it sadly. Nothing I can get back that would be useful. Can use that lance to kill a creature, but it doesn't help. Can play this with Kicker, but it doesn't do anything. Opponent did indeed have a shock, so we did play around it successfully by shocking our own Crusader. But sadly, we couldn't find Amber Cleave in time. And now we're very much dead. There's the Amber Cleave. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand's okay. Turn one, we get to play Fervent Champion. Turn two, Crusader. And then some one mana spells to play afterwards. Knight of the Ebon Legion to draw. I think I still play Crusader on two. Put on the mono black so far, Mindstone. So they're going big. So we can expect them to have some sweepers. For now I can attack, light up the stage, see what we find, maybe thought cease to check out the opponent's hand. And I can still play Scourge if I want to. Well, I guess we'll play a Scourge from Exile. And I don't think my life total is going to be under a ton of pressure, but I probably don't have to pay the one extra life here. Ritual of Soot would be the worst case scenario. Just a uh, thirst killing my Scourge, fair enough. Is 
So Awakening is not going to get cast this turn. So I can hit for 4 damage here and go Knight plus Scourge. And hope they don't wipe the board. Could also just play Knight and keep up the ability in case they have like a Languish in hand. So that it doesn't die. In case they go like end of turn, kill your Scourge into a Languish. So definitely a close call here. I think I will actually do that and just play my Swamp for now. And just wait an extra turn on playing Scourge. Alright, and there's a Languish. So that survives. So I can pump Knights, hit for 5, this puts them to 1. Uh, sadly don't have any Ramana up Ruins in my mana, but I guess we'll just pump and then play Scourge. At this point I don't think it matters if I take one extra damage here or not. So, I'm not gonna bother. Both of my creatures are lethal, and if I draw any burn spells, they're also dead. Blast Zone can deal with my knight. And our opponent concedes, awesome. Alright, sweet, so we managed to beat Mono Black Control. So yeah, overall the deck's been a lot of fun to play. The combination of Embercleave with Scourge is especially satisfying if you can land it, even if it doesn't happen every game. And yeah, as you can see here, I had to switch to Historic Event to record my last match, just because I kept getting matched against Monorad Aggro decks in a play queue, which was getting a bit repetitive and we already recorded a decent amount of games against Monorad. So this might not be the best deck to play in the play queue if you keep getting matched against Red Aggro decks 90% of the time, but you can always play Historic Events or Ranked, which may have a bit more variety. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.